So in today's video, I'm going to be teaching you all how to go and practice your acting from home. I'm going to give you four different points. We're going to go and talk about text analysis. We're going to talk about how you can practice and use your emotions. I'm going to be giving you guys things that I've learned from both my BFA and MFA training programs at drama school and also be giving you guys that today too. So stay tuned and we're going to get into all of that today. So point number one is going to be first with the text analysis portion. So text analysis for an actor is super important and you shouldn't be somebody who says, I don't want to work on text analysis and it's not something I need to do because if you look at any celebrity actor and you get a hand on their script and you're able to see all the notes that they make, they're making notes in there for a particular reason. It's text analysis. It's so they understand their characters better. And the better you understand your characters means the better that you can go and play that role. The more honest that role is because you know more about who that character is in their life and everything about them. So I'm going to be giving you guys something that is really powerful for text analysis. This is something that I use. This is something that I've given to other actors and they use it and it's been really helpful for them. So how it's going to work is you're going to have your scene. Then you're going to get a separate piece of paper and you're going to write down all the facts about your character. Not opinions, but facts. So you can't say, um, well, I think this character likes their car. Does the character say they like their car? Does another character in the scene say that your character likes the car? Or is it not brought up at all and it's just an opinion that you're making? You want to make sure you're writing down all the facts that you know. Now on a separate sheet of paper, you're going to write down all the things that you do not know. And then what you're going to find for yourself is when you look at the facts, you're going to realize that these facts start to fill in the blanks for the things that you don't know. And at that point, you can make educated opinions on your character. So you can decide, okay, how is this character interacting with their car? Is it any big deal at all in the scene? Or is it not even really mentioned? It's just the character gets in the car and drives away. Or are they putting facts into it? Are they saying, hey, your character goes and is polishing the car? Okay, well, if someone's going to polish their car, they care about their car more than somebody who just lets dirt pile up on the car and they do nothing for it. So then you start to build opinions and you also start to fill in the blanks for what you don't know based on the facts that you have. And this can be really powerful for the actor. So this works great for you if you practice this because the more you practice this, the better in tune you get as an actor to go and write down all the facts for a scene. So you don't want to just do this on the first time that you ever get an audition because you're, there's going to be points that you miss just for the fact that you don't practice this. You have not done this before. But if you work on this, and I suggest if you get three different scenes and you can practice it every single day, and it won't take you that long. All you're doing is you're just going through the facts and then you're running out things that you don't know. Do it for three different scenes every day. It doesn't take up a lot of your time. If you do this for 10 days, you would have went through 30 different scenes. You do this for one single month, every day, three different scenes for 30 days, you'd have went through 90 scenes, almost 100. Now, if you do this for an entire year, you're gonna go through so many scenes, you're gonna be doing so much text analysis that will your text analysis get better just by doing this over time and just by doing so much quantity? Yes, it will. But the thing is, a lot of actors just don't wanna put in the time. But the thing is, it doesn't take you five hours to go through this process. It's super simple. But if you're willing to put in that time, just a little bit needed to go through every single day, work on three different scenes for yourself, doing the text analysis, you're going to get so much better as an actor because you've been working and developing on your text analysis skills. The second point is going to be the cookbook method. Now, the cookbook method is going to be really important because it allows you to work and develop on your emotions as an actor. And as you know, if you want to be an actor, emotions are super important. you got to have emotions. If you have no emotions and you're just deadpanned, nothing's ever happening, nobody's going to hire you for a job. So you have to be able to use your emotions and have different levels of emotion. There's different levels of happiness and anger and sadness. And you have to be able to play within that spectrum depending on what the scene will call for. So with the cookbook method, it's going to require you to have an actual cookbook. The reason we're using a cookbook is because a scene or a monologue was written by a writer and that writer is helping the actor and assisting the actor by guiding them through a certain path with how the lines are given. It's super easy if you love somebody and you tell them that you love them and you say I love you and the lines are helping you travel through into that scene. It's super easy to say I love you but to have the emotion of love, now we have the cookbook here, and have the emotion of love on saying you need two eggs and a cup of water. That's going to be so much harder for a lot of actors. But if you can be the actor who can have the cookbook and look at it, and you can go and say, you need two eggs, and you need a cup of water. 
you start to realize that you become a more powerful actor for yourself. So what happens is with the cookbook, you're going to open up to a random page. You're going to pick an emotion that you want to work with. And it could be happiness, it could be anger, sadness, love, whatever you want. You're going to pick it. And you're going to open up to a random page. And you're going to pick an emotion. So let's say the emotion we pick, we'll pick one that can be harder for actors to use sometimes. We'll say, let's say it's anger we're going to work with, right? So I'm going to go and look at this cookbook. I'm going to open up to a random page. And I'm going to start reading it with anger in mind. So then I'm going to go and say, okay, I'm going to need two eggs. Then I'm going to need a cup of sugar. Then I'm going to need a pinch of salt. Then I'm going to have to stir it all up for five minutes straight. And then I'm going to go and put it in the oven. When you're working that way, all of a sudden you can see how there's emotion being involved just in the cookbook, but no text is helping me at all. No text is guiding me. Now, here's the reason why this is important. If you can get good at doing this with a cookbook, where there is no given emotion at all, when you get a scene or a monologue that you're working with, now you have the power of your art, the actor, and the art and the work of the writer. Now those two are working in combination, especially when you have good writing. And then your scenes become that much more powerful. So then when people watch you, they're captivated. And they're going, oh my god, I want to see more of what this person does. Compared to if you rely solely on the text and you can't activate or navigate or use your emotions without having a specific type of text, you're not always going to get that for yourself. But if you can do it with a cookbook and you can work in this way and you practice every single day, you will get better at using and operating with your emotions. Which then means when you do have that scene or a monologue, going to be that much better of an actor. Point number three is to go and record yourself. Use technology to your advantage. It's there for a reason. Pull out your camera, record yourself doing a scene or a monologue. Don't use the mirror for yourself. The mirror can be okay for some actors, but a lot of actors use it in the wrong way. So what happens is if you're using the mirror, you might have a scene or a monologue and you're pretending you're talking to a character over here, and maybe there's multiple characters in the scene, so you're going to be bouncing back and forth in different ways. But if I'm looking over here, you got a mirror here. So what are you gonna do if a mirror is right here and you're pretending to look at somebody over here? Your eyes naturally are gonna shift and you're gonna look this way because you're trying to look at yourself, right? Everybody's gonna do that if they're working with a mirror. But the thing is, that's not real or natural because if I'm talking to you and I'm actually here talking to you, my eyes aren't gonna go over here while I'm talking to you. You're gonna be like, what, what is this guy looking at? What, what is happening? But what's gonna happen is with the mirror, you're gonna get used to this habit of looking over here and having your eyes go over here. And then now all of a sudden you're working with a disconnect compared to if you just pull out your phone and you record yourself going and doing a scene or a monologue, you can look over here and it'll be fine because when you watch it back, you'll be able to see what this looks like. Your eyes are not always doing this. And then you start to find for yourself, what are you doing as an actor that's unrealistic? What are you doing that's realistic? And you're going to find for yourself, oh, when I record myself for some reason, I end up talking a lot louder than I actually do. Or, oh, I change my voice. Or, oh, I do these crazy things with my physicality and I'm going to stop doing that for myself because I can see it on the recording. And then you start to find out that you can also become your own coach at the same time. And that becomes really helpful. And it just requires you to put out your phone and record yourself. Now, this last point is something that I learned from both of my BFA and MFA training programs. Uh, the last name that I heard it be called was Walking on the Grid. I think it was a different name in my BFA program, but it doesn't even matter. You can come up with your own name for it if you like. It's just understanding the concept for you. And how it's going to work is you're going to imagine you're on an imaginary grid, okay? And you are going to have to have enough space in your room, or maybe you do it outside, or somewhere where you just have enough space to walk around. And literally, you're going to imagine you're walking on a grid, and every time your character has a change in thought, boom, you're going to move in a different direction. Another change in thought, boom. Just in random directions, but you're imagining you're on a grid. You're not making a circle. You're just walking on a grid doing sharp turns, okay? So let me just give you a quick example of this, and then I'll explain why it's used and the benefits that some actors find with it. So imagine you're in a scene, and we'll pick a really simple scene. We'll just make up some lines here. You come home from the mall, and you're saying, uh, hey, Betty, how's it going? Hey, do you know where Barky went? Where is he? All of a sudden, you were here talking to Betty, and then you were saying, where's Barky? Change of thought. You're looking for the dog. Dang, did he leave the house again? Boom. Change of thought. Every time. 
Every time you have a change of thought, boom, 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 you're moving around. And what happens is, and the reason that actors sometimes like this way of working, is because you're allowing your body to get into the text, meaning you're starting to get used to where transitions are happening. And if you mentally forget about it, sometimes the body will remember it because you've gone through this process. And it can be really helpful when an actor has a lot of different transitions or thoughts that they're going through for a character. And some people find that helpful. For me, it's not something that I typically use for myself. I haven't found it to be as useful for me. I'll use other techniques. But I do know a lot of actors who do like this technique and who do like it. So I wanted to give this all for you so you have options for yourself because the more options you have you can choose which ones to use and play with. I do know a lot of actors who love this technique and use it all the time so if it works for you use it. These are all options for you but if you can implement these and practice these every single day it will improve on your acting and all you got to do is just spend the time doing it. If you can spend the time working every single day you will improve but you have to be willing to spend the time and working on the right things for yourself. So congratulations to everybody who made it through this video. Go ahead and leave this emoji right here down in the comment section below so I know you made it all the way through and I'll see you guys next time. All right, bye-bye.